Hello and welcome to chapter 9, percent ionization. So uh, we have not learned what percent ionization is yet, but you are going to in this video, so you'll be fine, don't worry. Um, we're going to calculate all of our concentrations that we need as usual, and at the very end, percent ionization will factor in. All right, so let's start. What is our first step? Identify major species. Oh, okay. So let's see, step one, identify major species. By the way, this will be a short video, so you can get excited for that. All right, so this says that uh, calculate the percent ionization of 0.100 molarity NH3. So NH3 is our major species. And we have to think to ourselves, is this a strong or a weak acid or base? Hopefully in your mind you said, oh, ammonia, that's always a weak base. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to go on to step two, which is? Write out the reaction. So we'll take, oh, write out So we'll have ammonia, and I'm going to leave a little space here. Now, do I use a double arrow or a one-sided arrow? It's a weak base, so you should use a double-sided arrow. And we know that ammonia, when it reacts, it um, takes on a new hydrogen, so it becomes ammonium, and it creates hydroxide. Now, here's the thing. Where did the hydrogen and oxygen come from? Well, this reaction doesn't make sense unless we add in water. So when you do a reaction like this and all of your products that you need aren't coming from your reactant, you need to make sure water is thrown into there, into the mix. All right, so now we're going to move on to step three, which is? Write out the equilibrium expression. Write out the equilibrium expression. If this was a strong base, would I write out the equilibrium expression? No, I would not. So I know since it is a weak base, my K should, oops, wrong color. My K should have a subscript of what? It should have a subscript of the letter B because it's a base. I want products over reactants, so NH4 oops, plus OH minus, and since it's balanced, I don't have any coefficients. I'll have ammonia down here. Will I have water down here? The answer is no, I won't, because water is a liquid. Now, in this problem, we're not given KB. However, you would have a chart uh, provided to you that gives you K. A. So we know Ka. We know Ka is equal to, from a chart, you don't have to memorize it, 5.7 times 10 to the negative 10. And there's an equation that you should have memorized, and it might be provided on your formula sheet, so you'd have to double check. We know Ka times Kb is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. So I can use that information to solve for Kb. 5.7 times 10 to the negative 10 Kb is equal to 1.0. Oops, I didn't have that before. It is 1.0, but oh well, I'll be consistent. Um, all right, we end up with a Kb of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. I'm going to put that up, up here so I don't forget it later. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, so now that I have that, I need to actually use that equilibrium expression, which means I need some concentrations, which means I need to set up ice chart. Set up the ice chart. Okay, so let's write I, C, E down the side, our equation up at 
the top. You don't have to include water in this if you remember that water is not included in ice charts. I like to include it and then cross out water so that I know it exists but is not factoring in. Your choice there. Okay, um, notice that I did not do a dilution because this isn't by being diluted, it just told us the concentration, that's all. I'm just going to use it. So 0 0.100 and at the very beginning we know it has not formed any products. Um, by the way, this is something that you should be able to do without me. Your goal is to finish this ice chart and figure out what x is equal to. You could do that without me if you'd like. So I'm assuming my x's are in there, no coefficients, so it's just straight up x all the way across. That becomes x, sorry, 0 0.100 minus x. Okay, I have set up my ice chart. So now I need to move on to step five, which is... Plug into equilibrium expression. All right, plug into equilibrium expression. So I've got that, that's in step three. I know that um, 1.8 times 10 to the negative five is equal to my products over my reactant. So uh, let's see, um, I could try assuming that x is very small. So if I do that, that means that I get to cross out any x that is being subtracted or added to or from something else. And if I do that, then I end up finding that x is equal to 0 0.001342. Now before I can use this, I have to check the 5% rule. In order for your paper to be nice and neat, you should write this straight down instead of on the side like I am. Do as I say, not as I do. So x divided by what it's being compared to, that 0 0.100 times 100, hopefully it's less than 5%, otherwise I get to go back and do the quadratic, which I really don't want to do. This is equal to, this is one of our larger ones that we've done, 1.34%. Well, it's big, but it's still smaller than 5%, so we are good to go. So now that I've done that, I'm going to use my x to find the concentration of the ammonium ion. In percent ionization, let me write my formula, well, let, let's find the ammonium concentration first and then I'll explain. So the concentration of ammonium, NH4+, plus, which always comes out of ammonia, that's just equal to x. 3, 4, 2, molarity. So let's write the percent ionization equation. It's equal to the concentration of the ion that is formed. We're not talking about hydrogen here. So you could put a little note next to it that says not hydrogen. Um, over the total or initial concentration. And since it's a percent, we're going to multiply it times 100. So that means I need my N, oops, NH4 plus over my total concentration, um, the initial. So this is going to be ammonia. It's what it came from. My ammonium came from ammonia. That's what goes in the denominator. So we'll have 0 0.001342 over my ammonia concentration, the initial one, so not my final. And uh, I'll put these on here. Times 100 
and you'll end up with 1.3% and you could say, oh, it has been 1.3% ionized, which is not very much. If it was a strong base or a strong acid, what do you think this percentage might be? The answer would be 100%. So that could be a little note that you could add on the side, a little star, and say if it was a strong acid or a strong base, it'll always have 100% ionization. However, weak ones, not so much. All right, hope that helped.